Well, with the pandemic in the rearview mirror, fewer people are getting that COVID vaccine, and that showed up in Moderna's latest results with sales dropping 45%. But that drop was not as much as feared, and the company surprised investors, putting out a quarterly profit. They also reaffirmed their full year forecast. So the stock is popping today, but you have to put that into context. It's off about 80% from the pandemic peak, if we can take a longer term look at shares of Moderna. Our next guest has a buy on Moderna and sees the stock going higher from here. Hataj Singh is a managing director and senior biotech analyst at Oppenheimer. Hataj, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's still very much about COVID, it seems, in, in this quarter and the fact that sales didn't drop perhaps as much as fear. Where did you find comfort in the quarter? Yeah, Amber, you know, um, and thank you for first and foremost for having me on here. Always a pleasure. Um, you know, Moderna is sort of a tale of, of two stories. Uh, and we upgraded in January, you pointed that out. You know, the tension between COVID-19 uh, vaccine uptake and, and revenues versus the pipeline. Uh, if you remember, uh, actually, in early uh, January, uh, Stefan Bancel put out, you know, a blog post updating uh, the market on the pipeline and stock really popped. Um, today, they had kind of a... I think uh, two good things happened at the same time. One was the COVID-19 revenue seemed to be slightly better than expected. On the bottom line, they actually had a benefit from some one-offs um, on, on cost of goods sold and taxes for, for, for net earnings. Um, and the other thing was that their pipeline now is starting to become fuller and fuller. We're going to see flu phase three data, combo flu and COVID-19 phase three data also this year, um, uh, what's called cytomegalovirus uh, phase three data later this year. Um, and then they re reiterated their guidance uh, for uh, COVID-19 sales, both in the US and ex-US for the year. So, you know, to your point, this is a story that's been COVID-19 linked mm -hmm. for three plus years now. And now we can see the change happening towards people focusing on the pipeline. A lot of the calls uh, a lot of the questions actually on the on the earnings call were also related to the pipeline as opposed to just COVID-19 vaccine sales. So I do think that shift is happening away from COVID-19 vaccine sales. Because that was really the thesis, right? Is like th they're not just this vaccine maker. They're a platform company that they just can plug in all sorts of ailments um, and through their technology, uh, create, develop vaccines, potentially even cancer vaccines. Um, did that narrative get a little bit ahead of them, ahead of itself? Or, you know, to your point, it sounds like you're saying now we're starting to see that thesis playing out. You know, it's a really good point. I mean, here's the thing, you know, when the pandemic happened, you had five or six years worth of drug development in terms of getting a vaccine to the world's, um, you know, the world's population uh, compressed into one year, one and a half year. And that's essentially what happened. So they had that and they got, you know, financial benefits from that. They've got a very robust balance sheet right now. Uh, what would normally have taken them three, four, five, six years to develop that vaccine now it took just a year and a half because the mm -hmm. governments were working with them. Uh, they saved tens of millions of lives also. Now what's happening is people are going back to focusing on the, on the platform, as you indicated. And look, in biotech, platform means two very simple things. One is that once you get the first drug approved, uh, because you're use, uh, using the same exact basically modality, in this okay. case, mRNA, you can get the approvals faster and with a higher degree of success. And that's what they demonstrated at their R&D day last year. They were showing fast rates of development and higher, um, um, and higher rates of success. It was a, such a windfall, right? This this company went from nothing to something, um, and the and, and the revenue is falling. But they still in a pretty healthy cash position. Have they been clear about what they plan to do with that? I mean, they do virtually no M and A, um, and anything they've done have been very small compared to the billions that they're sitting on in cash. Correct. So, you know, when they did the IPO, we've covered them since the IPO, uh, they had about 16, uh, 15 to 20 projects, you know, under development. Uh, and the, during the pandemic, they had in the 20s. Now they're in the 30s. They're getting close to companies like Regeneron and Vertex in terms of the number of projects they've got under development. So, you know, this is a management team that does very rigorous testing of what external ideas could meet, you know, the, the kind of high standards they have for moving projects through the clinic, right? So that's 
why they're probably choosing to invest the money that they have into their internal pipeline, as opposed to go and look for something else. And I'll just end with saying that they've said clearly they're, they're what's called a nucleic acid company. They're going to focus on you know companies that have nucleic acids, uh, kind of therapies and development, as opposed to antibodies, ADCs, or other stuff. All right. 